Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, this is the Ramble. We go until midnight tonight. And now here with the news is Lori Thompson. Oh, there is so much going around and so much going on. How could I ever tell you? Go outside and then call us. <laughs> yeah, right. Do you know, uh, this is uh, when we recorded this. I mean, we, well, we always have to say this. So when we recorded this, uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 yesterday was the hottest day in the history of planet Earth. Wow. And that's, I mean, in Illinois, where I grew up, we had hot. And then Mississippi, whole new kind of hot. And yeah. then Florida, <laughs> hot, hot. Yeah. So yeah. Is, it, is it hot down there? Oh, yeah. We got up to 99. And then New Orleans, though, was like 113, 114. But it doesn't look like so, you're breaking a sweat. No, because I don't sweat that much. I just made a policy against it. You, you, <laughs> you're, said, you're, no. you're, against, you're against sweating. Well, I just kind of tell myself I'm calm, I'm calm. I'm content, have a blessed <laughs> life, <laughs> and Zoom, that perspiration goes away. Yeah. Now, do you like Florida? It's like any place, and you can like it or you can not. I choose to like things, find things, little pockets that I like. Mm-hmm. I like the small town connectedness of it. Like, we're in a tiny town of about a less than 15,000 people. And then, of course, there's Destin, the tourist in Mecca to the south of us by uh, probably 15 miles, and which will take you an hour and then some mm-hmm. at full tourist season. But I like the intimacy of a small town, like you see people where you shop, you have your you know, your seafood shop and yeah. your yield that, and I love that intimacy. And you get to know but them, you get to know them too. Really, for, yeah, for real, and yeah. I like how small towns keep you honest. And so uh, that I like about where we are. Small, I don't know small, how. Wait a minute. Small towns keep you honest. Explain well, that. Okay. Well, if you grow up in a place and you grow up there until you're 18, mm-hmm. then you want to, like, you know, change your persona and start talking with an English accent or something or wearing berets, they will mention it. They will, like, call you on it, like, oh, really? you know. Oh, did we just get back from Paris? Or, ooh, are we a French poet? You know, just little things. Yes. And then what it does, I think, in turn, is develops your sense of humor. Yeah. About yourself, about others. Oh, that's nice. Cr- that's nice. Yeah. 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 And now, uh, uh, I hear birds, by the way. Oh, yeah. We got them by the ton. In fact, birders is a viable, birding is a viable hobby. People listed on forums and stuff. Birding? birding what is now, what is birding exactly I, it's kind of like going hunting for uh you know hunting for geese but leaving the guns at home you take <laughs> binoculars instead <laughs> we could shoot down lunch or we could enjoy nature okay but so, birding. birding birding sometimes people take p- photography you know into their birding exploits um i just like watching them from my you know windows like there are blue jays here, there are cardinals here, mm-hmm. which I thought those were. I tend to think of those as like by northern, I mean uh, Illinois and north birds, but they're here. Wait, can you they're tell that? Mobile. Can you tell that bird to shut up? Oh, I know, and they start so early, like uh, and you know, pretty much they're the hardy ones. They're with you all season long. Really? You know, they, yeah. Because, yeah. uh, you know, we got the influx of bird tourists yeah. flying south for the winter. 
So. Okay, move your legs closer together. It's, a, it's an unattractive oh. shot. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll do what I always do. But no, what happens yeah. is you have you have the camera set so that it, it zooms in and out on you, and that's fine. It, it's okay. nice that the camera keeps moving, all right? Uh, but uh, at one point, it was just like you were there, and it was a wide shot of your legs spread, which, you know, I mean, Ready. I'm sure my audience wasn't complaining about, but, you know, I it's mean... Maybe I want you to look as attractive as possible. Well, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I like your attention to detail. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. you've always been a really talented uh, video person, I thought. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and man, that's that's great. I mean, just expanding yeah. your tools. Well, speaking of, um, of, of video, I was watching a video the other day of us doing a show with... Uh, they might be giants. Yeah. And and you were there, and everybody was there, and uh, you know it brought back a lot of good memories. Oh, man, it was so fun. I mean, I would wake up every morning knowing I was going to have fun and feeling like you know, okay, what am I going to bring to this party? Like a covered dish that won't fly. Although on Thanksgiving, you remember, people would bring in whole turkeys sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah. We did the we did the show on Thanksgiving and it was so. Yeah, I think I, the reason I did the show on on holidays or Thanksgiving, I didn't mind doing it, because we did the show from six to ten in the morning, and you don't but, have your turkey till three four in the afternoon. And by the yeah. way, I then made ho went home and made a turkey and then invited everybody over to you know partake yeah. who wanted to. Yeah. But. Uh, uh, it, I worked holidays like that because we had a live studio audience and sometimes people couldn't get down other than on that day, you know? Yeah, but that's why those days were always so fun. I mean, you'd meet new people, you'd have great conversations, and just, it was delightful. Imagine me being considerate of my audience. Get yeah. out, shut up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Word, word is out. We didn't work Christmas, though, I don't think. No, we did not. We never we worked not. Christmas. Or Although we had a Jewish program director, huh? And just although we had a Jewish program director and general manager, yeah. And I went to the program director. How come you get your holidays off and our holidays too, as Gentiles? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, he said that's the way it is. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I used to do years ago, is uh, when I was at other stations and I wasn't doing a morning show and we didn't have to deal with the whole crew and everything like that. Uh, I would offer always to work Christmas because Sweet. I said, you know, I'm Jewish. I don't care about Christmas, and and there are people that do, and they have families, and they want to be with them. And if there's some shift I can take that will relieve somebody of the burden of having to be here, then I'll yeah. do it. I'll do it. You know, because but then you better give me a Jewish holiday off. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. I want a comp. I want a Hanukkah comp day. And I never, I never used the Jewish card. By the way, I never told a boss, "Hey, it's Rosh Hashanah. I can't, you know, I can't." Yeah, work. I don't recall doing yeah. that at all. It, it's it's Jew. It's Yom Kippur. I I'm sorry. I'm. In fact, I used to get hell from people in New York when I would work on Yom Kippur, which is the most religious of all the Jewish holidays. Uh -huh. And they would call up and go, how can you be working today? You're Jewish. You know, because in New York, mm -hmm. they didn't, that wasn't a good thing to do. So finally, I had a boss once who said, you're taking Yum Kipper off. And I said, <laughs> but I don't really celebrate it. You know, I'm not really, I'm a, I'm a, 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 a Jew in, in name only, you know. <laughs> a phone in Jew. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I'm a phone in Jew, right. And uh, they said, no, you're going to take the day off. And I said, why? And they said, because it makes us look bad. We exactly. don't care what you think. It makes us look bad. So I was forced to take Yom Kippur off, you know. Yeah, no, one, one is, a, uh, is it Rosh Hashanah that's the party holiday? And then the, the, the uh, Yom Kippur that's the Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of a blast. And I can't and forget. I, uh, I can't forget. It. Let's see here. What Jewish new? What Jewish year is this? What Jewish? Is it the year of the something? Like what was Bobby Slayton's old line? I know it's past the new year, but I keep writing the year of the fish. Yeah. On my <laughs> what, what, what Jewish year is it? And here we go. 
It's we 50. have it. Okay. Are you ready? Ready. Ready to jump into the future? See, we Jews live in the future. You do? Yeah. Didn't know that either. And yeah. the Hebrew year is 5763. Wow. Yeah. You must have a Wi-Fi everything. Oh, we have flying Wi-Fi cars. Poster. We have the robot made. We have the everything. You are the Jewish Jetson. You, That's you. You, you know, I was <laughs> I was always into technology, right? And, yeah. And what really pissed me off, I'm 83 years of old, uh, years of age. I can't even talk today. <laughs> years of age. And I don't have yet. A, a robot made. No. You know, oh my gosh. And, and all the science fiction, you had a robot made. Yeah, you did. You, you should know. petition a, a little, a little robot with a with a you know a, a, a whisk broom. Yeah, but also an apron. You know. Yeah. And yeah, uh, there was Rosie and yeah. the Jetsons, yeah. and um, of course the Flintstones didn't have them. You know, no, they didn't. I, they didn't I, have them. They, they, I was more of a Flintstone person. You know, stuck in the past. Oh, and I was really? Stuck you in wanted the a car that you had to make go with your feet? Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. did. You know, supposedly it's like those pedicures where yeah. they put you in a, a container, a, a, a kettle of fish, essentially, and the fish just nibble at all the. Days. Well, you know what they ever always kept promising us: in the future, we would have video phones. And yeah. the fact was, we never got the video phone. I mean, they tried them, but they didn't yeah. work that well. I remember I go to like you know some kind of you know convention or something for the future and so on, and they would have video phones there, and AT and T would have it hooked up somewhere, and the picture was fuzzy and it was horrible. Well, we never got the video phone. What we got was this, which yeah. is in, in, infinitely better than anything we ever expected for quality and everything else yeah Yeah. well there's facetime and i'm always butt dialing people with facetime and they're they're going why am i looking at your ass it's like i don't know i thought you two should get to know each other yeah yeah yeah, right i I bet i mean i'm kind of notorious among my friends for that so i just stay off the phone (laughs) yeah you just stay off the phone i uh uh uh, uh, I don't use FaceTime. I, I usually, if I'm going to deal with somebody, I'll, I'll Zoom them. I'll have them Zoom me. You know. That's good. I, I mean, mean, Zoom I, is. I, I, hmm? and no, I, at the beginning of COVID, I thought I'm going to invest everything I have, all my parents' money and everything, in Zoom. But hmm. it was the stock at that point was a little pricier than I like to pay for stocks, and uh, sure enough. Through the roof. Well, COVID made it a necessity. Exactly. And there were other systems, like I was using Skype for years, okay? Right. We would do Skype interviews in Iowa, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'd do Skype interviews. And uh, it was just not as good as Zoom. Zoom just did them one better, and they never, nobody ever looked back at Skype. Right, and then people, you could tell, learned, although there was a shorter window, to edit audio off Skype, and then some people didn't bother, and it was kind of disastrous to listen to on your car radio, because there was, they didn't adjust it for Skype. Yeah, well, you know, I'm I'm recording, I'm recording this now as we, as we talk, and if I wanted to edit it, I could, but why? Why at this point we've you know. seen each other's flaws and you know yeah. so let's get back to Florida, okay? Because yeah. when I was in Florida, you remember I went to Florida. Yeah, you, Miami. You, you were you, like sentenced. You, you were sentenced to Florida. You, you remember uh, how how absolutely upset I was when I came back from Florida. I mean, Florida was yeah. just. Uh, and we're, let's not say Florida. Let's say Miami. Miami. Yeah, you had post-traumatic stress when you came back from uh, Miami. Uh, does Miami have a lousy reputation? I mean, as it, uh, it's not a very it, nice town. People there are very mean. You mean mean like they're thinking about they're themselves mean. all the time? They're mean, mean. Anytime well, I they think can be part of that, what? Part of that has to do. With, part of that has to do with the dual languages. Um, because you don't know by looking at someone whether they speak Spanish or English as a primary language, Miami, you're constantly having to negotiate that to make that decision. Yeah, but, but they, you know, they, were, they were just mean. I mean, I did a talk show, and so I got these yeah. people calling me, and they were just nasty, nasty, mean, mean, mean. 
I yeah. wonder if that has to do with the demographic. I, I don't have the demographics for Miami in front of me, but that might have to do with leisure time. You know, people got nothing else to do but call the talk show host and go bitch. Yeah. Well, be me. well, I mean, I thought, you know, I go to Miami, hell, you know, what's the worst thing I have to put up with? Jews, right? <laughs> but no, no, I had, the, these people were just mean. Really? Yes. Now, I believe. I've only been there for like, you know, to take a cruise and left out of there. And when mm -hmm. I was moving to Key West, mm -hmm. I stayed there, but only for two days. Well, Key so West is nice, though. Key West yeah. is nice. It's expensive. It's very hard to stay sober there. Isn't that the southernmost point of the United States? It is. In fact, there's a big Bowie, Bowie, um, that you can get your picture taken by. Everybody does. I Hawaii. think it's it is the lowest point in the United States. Yeah. Yeah, most southern. Yeah. Yeah, and there, in fact, a friend of mine had an aviation memorabilia store mm -hmm. there, yeah. and he had posters of when you could take a direct flight to Cuba for like thirteen bucks. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, that, that's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. you know, Cuba isn't that far. No, not at all. Was seventy-five it's, miles or something off the coast of Florida? I'm not sure of the exact distance. I mean, you can't see it from there, obviously. Yeah. But like, like what's her name in uh, Russia? But uh, <laughs> you can, yeah. you can. Yeah. It, it's like driving to Chicago from Champagne. Now, did you actually live in Key West for a while? I lived in Key West. I worked at a great radio station down there. The call letters escape me. But um, wait a minute, you work for a radio station and you can't remember the call letters. I know. Well, so that's I, something you say over and over and over, over again. Over. Well, we gotten out of that because radio ratings were the people meeting at that point, and so you didn't need to say the call the emphasis on callers. Plus, I did three stations at that group, so yeah. it was. In fact, you could people would do, and I could do this. I just preferred not to very much. You could do one show live, and then track another show of a completely different format like i did country i did top 40 there top 40 was the main gig and it was very fun uh and the people i worked with were so cool and it's holiday broadcasting i think is the name of it it's uh, I mean, how, how rough you know i in a lot of these areas where it's like uh, oh up north in california like up in mendocino or where you were in key west i mean those stations are just kind of easy to work at very you, easy you know easy going they, and, they had a bar in the station van <laughs> yeah and the reason and the reason why people are there they're not there because this radio station is like a step up in your in your career right okay exactly. they're there because they like key west yeah and they want to they they have a job and that's good and it doesn't pay a hell of a lot but what the hell it's okay you spend what you save yeah that's what i Stayed up to move to Key West, yeah. and I had enough to sustain me for about a year. I mean, but I wanted. So you to hadn't met your husband yet when you moved to Key no. West. No. Oh no. So you somehow voluntarily moved to the southernmost part of the United States. I did well. I did voluntarily, and Key West was great. But you know, before I, I got a handle on, and as you know, as much as you ever get a handle mm. on an alcohol. You. Yeah. Uh, oh, so I, you were still you were still a drunk back then. Not no. I would have periods of long sobriety by long. I mean, <laughs> for a year, you know. Yeah. And then I would go somewhere, and it wasn't until AA, and as much good as AA does. Yeah. Um, I didn't become a bin streaker until I got into AA, because they treat you the way they treat it. You have one drink, and you've broken your sobriety. So the mentality for some, including yeah. myself, was I've broken sobriety. Well, it's we have really that in common. I, I was a binge watcher. That was that I watched people binge drink. So yeah. I was a binge watcher. Yeah. <laughs> so we had it covered from every perspective. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it's a very drinking culture. It's a very expensive city, K West. You think of, you know, oh you'll go down there, you'll live on the beach, you'll you know, how much can it cost? It can cost quite a bit for uh, rent. Uh, uh, Hemingway lived there. He did. And there's yeah. a Hemingway house and I believe he had cats. Fifth, uh, lots of cats. Lots and lots and of cats. And supposedly there's still the, the the progeny of those cats uh -huh. is still living there. Am I right? Well, see, I didn't do the go to 
do the tourist stuff. I went to live there, but my mother and sister came down to visit. It was a blast, and they, my mom went to all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. She mentioned, I believe she mentioned the cats, and she, she did everything. Took every tour. You know, Calvin Klein is the one responsible for it, supposedly. Real estate prices booming because the Calvin Klein bought a place there. That's when the real estate started to. Well, you know what you've got is you've got a very small area there. That's uh, that's you know it's the tip of uh, of the penis I called Florida. I uh, remember that, uh, <laughs> and the keys are like. I, I used to say on the air, I said, "How can how can I love a state that looks like a penis?" Yeah, you know. <laughs> And, it does. And I said, uh, you know, and, and what is that uh, that highway going down? It looks like a vein. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All flowers. But yeah. anyway, uh, um, um, that's how much I hated that area. But the thing is, it, it is the very tip of uh, the United States. And, yeah, and, but, and I would imagine it's not very large. And so, therefore, no. people are going to find it a place they want to live and get away to. And yeah. uh, therefore, everything's going to be really expensive. And the station was actually north of Key West because everything is. <laughs> and so I bought a scooter. It was so cute, a metropolitan scooter, and it looked. It had '40s kind of styling, 1940s, and it was so darling. And that's how it get to. I don't know how, I, how. How did you wind up in these places? I mean, you were with me in San Francisco. I would have thought you would have just stayed in San Francisco and worked San Francisco, and uh, I, until you dropped dead, you know. Well, I didn't. I was in a relationship, and it, that parlayed into it. Um, I just was kind of over the, what life had become. So you, you went back home, right? I did. I went back to Illinois. Worked at another radio station there, you know, just to kill time. If I, if I remember correctly, it was Clinton, Illinois, right? Well, this was Bloomington, the big town. Oh, oh, but you, but you were born and raised in Clinton. Clinton, right? Population seventy eight hundred, probably less now because they closed the nuclear plant. Oh, really? Closed, oh, yeah. I don't think it was ever profitable, and uh, so they closed it. And what a nuclear like, plant! It was a nuclear power plant. Yeah. yeah. How do nuclear it, power plants not make money? I don't know, man. I don't know. That's kind of like but, Trump. How do you own a casino and lose money? Exactly. You set the rules. You know, which yeah. are the rule, the first rule of which is the casino makes the dough. But casinos are created to just eat up money. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. unless it's owned by Trump, in which case it goes bankrupt. <laughs> I don't. Oh, yeah. 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 Speaking of Trump, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know much about business, but I could own a casino and not go broke. Okay. Oh, I think so. Yeah. I think you've yeah, it in. What were we saying yeah. about Trump? Uh, oh, Trump. Well, I was thinking of the campaign and how we're here in Florida. First of all, he's in New Hampshire. He's everywhere else campaigning. Ron DeSantis, our governor. Yeah. And people are saying, hey. Who's minding the store in Florida? Well, it, considering it's Ron DeSantis, you're probably better off he isn't in town. Yeah, I know. Get the monkeys in there. <laughs> but uh, we, well, he is, uh, in fact, he's the shoot myself in the foot candidate. And his uh, yeah, his super PAC, he was in New Hampshire, of course, over the holiday, because that's one of the key states, initial, initial. Yeah. And uh, it was he was in a parade and it was raining and he just looked like it looked like go home and get four more years you know, do Florida again. What, what I don't understand about DeSantis is he's going up against a guy who was under indictment. You know. I know, but you know what? He has played <laughs> under indictment him. twice. Okay. I know. I know. Which to me is like that right there is a bit of a red flag. Yeah. And I mean, if you can't be, if you can't beat that. Then you're a loser. But you know what he does? He doesn't want to offend Trump, so he skirts the skirts the fringe of criticism. And as one person put it, you can't go around Trump; you have to go through Trump. And he won't do that because you know he doesn't want to. Well, I'll, I'll tell you something. The guy I love—I hate to say it—but I love Chris Christie. I mean, uh -huh. Chris Christie yes. is saying, I'm not going to sit here and say wonderful things about a man who I can't say wonderful things about anymore. Yes. And he I said, I did at one time, but I was sadly mistaken. 
and I work with the man and I know his faults. And he said, this man is just not fit to be president of the United States. Yeah, I would, you know, I, I like Chris Christie as well. Yeah. And, uh, but the sense is it's like, what else can I do wrong? First of all, there was the Disney battle he, he launched right yeah. before the campaign broke. And then, uh, oh, well, and what is his campaign? Well, listen, a, we're running out of, we're running out of time here, but let's on our next go around, pick up where we left off and that's on about DeSantis because you're in Florida and if anybody right. knows DeSantis it's people in Florida so so I'll, yeah. see, I'll see you next week okay 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 bye bye now in its ninth year this is GabNet the great American broadcast network talk like you've never heard it before I just love her. Just love her. Who can't love her? That's uh, that's uh, that's our old uh, uh, our newswoman from San Francisco, and my partner, as it were. Uh, let me turn my audio down here a little bit. Anyway, hello to everybody. How are you? I'm uh, I'm uh, trying to stay awake tonight. I don't know. I think maybe I got to stop doing this show so late at night. Maybe I should do it during the day, and then I'll be a little more. I won't be as, uh, you know, tired uh, because this is getting to be towards my bedtime, you know. And uh, anyway, huh. mm. of course, I can't go to sleep till till uh, the show is over with Jack because if it isn't over, if I'm not up, I can't then post his shows, and then if he has any problems posting his shows, I have to be here. So I don't get to sleep till two o'clock in the morning. All right, which means I get up at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, mm, you know, and I just wish that I would uh, be a little more awake each night here. But anyway, that's uh, that's it. Let's see here. Let's uh, we don't have that many people waiting for us, but let's uh, let's admit the two people that are there. Um, there we go, and it's coming up. There we go. There's Josh Wheeler. And there's Charlie Wallace. Hello, Josh and Charlie. And here comes Kevin. Uh, so that makes it four very intelligent people. And here comes Jeffrey Stein. Uh, and uh, he's added to our group. Boy, everybody's popping in. Now let's see if, if, if uh, Jeff can get on without having his audio on. <laughs> let's see what happens here. Okay. There we go, and, and it's coming no, up. There no, we go. No, there's no. Josh Wheeler, and there's Charlie. He killed it. He got it. Why don't you do that before you come on, instead of after, Jeff? Well, I got everything right, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, you came on, the sound was on. And then you um, turned it off, and you knew how to turn it off. But why did you turn it off before you sure. join our panel? You know, you're probably correct. Yeah, that's I, I, just uh, just a little suggestion on my part. I, don't know. I, you know, I'll write that down. It's kind of something we find lovable about you, okay? Right? So, yeah. Uh, hello there, Josh. How are you tonight? He's frozen there for a second. Hello, Josh. Hello. <laughs> And hello to uh, uh, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. And I said hello to Charlie too. What is that? What does your T-shirt say tonight? Oh, mine. Yeah. It says not false. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Yeah, not false. It's true. Not funny because it's true. Oh, I Have see. you ever had okay. a joke where somebody says the yeah, joke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, this true. one's a little more obscure. <laughs> it's a little more, yeah. I think about it. Yeah, you have to think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, so uh, oh, yeah. all I need. What does your your say, uh, Jeff? Jeff, let's see it. What's all I say? need is jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Are you sending away to like Amazon to try and beat Charlie out every night? No, not at all. I just, I, I decided to get a different size T-shirts. Mm -hmm. oh, so see. I got to throw away some of the other ones that are too big. Yeah. Well, I, 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 uh, um, mine are some of the ones, you know, the ones that say like uh, 1939 on them, the ones I've had, they're all starting to fade. 
and and That's some a long time ago. huh 1939 was a long time well, ago. no i haven't had him since 1939 <laughs> jeez almighty so anyway, uh, let me see here. Anything happened today? No, nothing happened today. I just stayed home again. It was too hot to go out. It was it was 92 degrees here in Manhattan, uh, yeah. and so I couldn't I couldn't go out in that, and uh, so I stayed home with the air conditioning. And mm. you know, I'll, I'll never uh, if it, more of this. I won't even be able to walk ever again. You know, it's just getting to be. Uh, too much of not exercising and going out and doing things and whatever and then tomorrow I have my, my CT scan my what I think is a useless CT scan but nevertheless I'm doing it because my doctor doesn't want me to sue him if he overlooks something so <laughs> you know over his ass Everything I read says I don't really need one. In fact, one thing that I read said that they shouldn't, they shouldn't do follow-ups if uh, your, uh, uh, if certain things are met, the size of the uh, nodes in your lungs and whatever, you know, are not over like uh, six millimeters or something like that. You shouldn't send somebody back to do anything about it. Take another one because it will just, mm -hmm. well, it will just make people go crazy. You know, I, I whenever he orders up these tests I'm going you know it's just I don't it, it, I don't need them to find anything <laughs> right you know I know it's stupid of me but I oh yeah it's better if they find it yeah then then I won't be able to go on those vacations because they'll be digging into me on and off for the next five years you know so I don't know it's strange it's strange uh, so what's happening in your neck of the woods, uh, Je uh, Josh? Not a whole lot. Nothing? No, we just got back yesterday, late last night. So. Oh, oh, you went where? I went upstate New York and in uh, Vermont. Oh, Vermont's very, wow. very nice up there. I love Vermont. In fact, that yeah, was nice, actually. I would love to actually move to Vermont. I told Marjorie, I mean, we, we have some friends who live up there, and we go up occasionally to visit them, and it's just... It, one of the nicest states ever, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it amazing. Fun. Where did you go? Well, we went up north there, so we went to the Saratoga area, mm -hmm. and we went up to Lake Champlain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where uh, actually to Fort Ticonderoga, and we actually crossed. That's the it, lake. by the way, in case people don't know Fort Ticonderoga, that's where they invented the pencil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we crossed the Lake Champlain on a ferry there, mm -hmm. uh, right there by the fort, and then we went into Vermont and did a few things there, and we stayed in Albany uh, for a few nights, uh, where we were kind of based out of. So it was in Albany, and then up north, uh, Lake Champlain. I'm trying to remember if the lake we were on was Champlain. Uh, I don't know. It, it, is it? Uh, it's up north and it's connected if I remember part New York part of Vermont yeah it, it's the it's basically the state border for maybe that like might, that might miles. have been that might be like miles or so yeah might. we have Lake George which is all New York and then mm -hmm. sort of like some land in between them and parts and then Lake Champlain mm -hmm. you know and then Vermont yeah. Um, yeah so we crossed there at the fort and uh um went into vermont and did a few things and like i said we we, we stayed in albany for a few days right there on the outskirts were you up near burlington no we didn't go that far north mm -hmm. uh, we were maybe about 50 60 miles south of that well then maybe maybe maybe, maybe, Champ maybe, maybe champlain wasn't where i was i'm trying to remember what lake that was uh well i think champlain goes all the way up to Burlington, I'm pretty sure. Okay, all right. Um, yeah. I could check. We here were a we were in an inlet on the lake, and I think mm. I, I I honestly believe it was Champlain. Yeah, it probably was. I'll check it out. But I mean, it was nice. You know, the weather up there is a little cooler than it gets in New York City and Long Island and those places. So it was pretty nice. Uh, you know, it wasn't bad, and uh, we were. 
We're actually at Ticonderoga on the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it was pretty nice. It had a lot of festivities and stuff like that. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Vermont National Guard sent a couple of their F-35s out. They did a flyover for some photo opportunities that mm -hmm. they were doing for something around the state. And that was pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's took nice. A, we oh. took a boat out on a tour on Lake Champlain. Uh, just, just stuff like that. It was pretty good. Hello to Alan. And by the way, hello to Steve Fox, who is the <laughs> new voice of GabNet. Hello. Yes. Right. <laughs> How you doing, Steve? I'm doing all right. Yeah. You know, just got a night off finally. Turn your so. mic down just a little bit, okay? It's, it's, Is it up? Yeah, it's up. It's up. Uh -oh. Yeah. Just How about I go like this? Yeah. That would, I know. That would help a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so you've been you got you not working. You got some time off. <laughs> finally. Yeah. Had the first uh, night off and. Um, I'm back at it again tomorrow, so this has been a killer. Really? But they <laughs> have somebody that they have you in there every day now, or it's been you know it's a five day stretch, and then you get a day off, and then come back again. It's like ah, oh. is that but a is much... that a union gig? Yeah. Good. Good. Exactly. <laughs> no complaints. Yeah. Uh, it just affects my sleep pattern, but anyway, but yeah, I'm alive. But they can't work you over a certain amount, is what I'm saying. Right. Without but they pay, do sometimes. But they have to pay a lot more for doing it. Oh, yeah. That. Yeah. Wow. So. And the nice part was uh, the 4th of July. So they give us triple time. Oh, wow. Like triple oh, time. Really? Did you ever get that when you were uh, working holidays? But when I, I, You know something? I got to tell you. Uh, I worked so little for union shops over the years that I, you know, like... Um, I worked. I came to New York. I came. I came to New York. Well, actually, where was it? I first had to get. I first got my AFTRA card. Was I think mm -hmm. in Chicago? Uh, there wasn't one in Texas because Texas doesn't have any, you know, unions down there. Oh, unions. It's a right to work state. And then mm -hmm. I moved to uh, Chicago, and I think that's where I got my first AFTRA card. And I was delighted. I always wanted to have an AFTRA card, right? Then I moved to New York, and all the stations I worked here during that time were union, okay? Enough so I get about $1,000 a month uh, retirement fund, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when I suddenly, when I, went, when I left uh, uh, New York, went back to San Francisco, no union stations. I had nothing, you know, and I haven't worked a union station since then. And what union stations I have worked at have yet to send me a check. So I don't understand where the union is, you know. So are you in your retirement right now? It doesn't it look like it? Oh <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. I mean you're not getting anything from AFTRA? Oh I for... get well I get my retire I get retirement. I get about a thousand a month in retirement. I would have gotten more if I kept working, you know, the uh, union stations over the years. But mm. there, you know, in San Francisco, there were only one or two union stations by the time I got there, mm. you know. Wow. Uh, and, um, and so consequently, um, that's about as much as I get from the union. I, you know, I got some money because I worked in Chicago and I worked in New York. And then I did some TV gigs like for KQED. I did Comedy Tonight and that, that was a union gig, you know. So I, I still got some, you know. Well, that's good. But not a lot, you know, so what the <laughs> hell? Anyway, oh, hey, here comes Brian Neary. Jeez, there's a lot of people for a Thursday night. Yep. Evans. Yeah. Evans to Betsy. Well. Champlain does go all the way up to Burlington, by the way. What? Champlain must have been where you were. I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess it was Lake Champlain then. I mean, it runs clear to the you know Canadian border and then some. And then yeah, uh, I I think the reason I felt that it it just started there was because we were on, in an inlet, and um and so consequently it kind of felt like that's where the lake started, but it didn't start there. I'm sure it started down quite a ways. Yeah, yeah. it it's it's it starts all the way up in you know like the in Canada, and it runs clear down to you know below Ticonderoga. A little bit there we actually it's and it's really narrow down there uh, it's not that wide across now up in the Burlington area it's it's pretty wide 
yeah you know it really widens out there and then it narrows up again at the top and uh you know i mean that's why it was so important back then was you know they could come in from like uh some of the canadian river systems up north from like through the st lawrence seaway and stuff like that that's what made it so strategically important yeah but i just couldn't remember burlington's exact location in vermont i knew the lake went up that high but but yeah burlington is fairly why close. did you decide to go where you went on your vacation uh well we went to saratoga to to visit the battle area because i had not visited saratoga he loves visiting battle areas it's supposed to be nice up there and uh um you know champlain uh was uh strategically important like i said so it was kind of connected and then ticonderoga the same deal uh it's a nice area and we had never visited that area either um so we visited a few of those places uh we were just taking a look at that um that northern theater you know some of the research and stuff that i was doing and just mm -hmm. getting out so uh that's what made us go up there just a couple things i wanted to see that we hadn't seen yet and the fact that we never we'd actually never visited that area we kind of been do all you ever do you ever take vacations where you just take vacations to uh, go swimming you know or stuff like that or are all your vacations visiting these national parks and these uh, battle battlefields in the Civil War and things like that because that seems to be where you get your take your vacations yeah most of them are I mean not all of them are always connected historically but you know we visit the the sites you know I mean you know Yellowstones and you know Zion's and Bryce Canyons, Rocky Mountain, National Park, you know, those kinds of places. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I don't like uh, coastal, you know, beaches or whatever and big crowds of people and parties and all that. I really, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm not really into that. I mean, we went to, we had to stop on the way at Niagara Falls, uh, which I, you know, was super crowded. I, I thought that was kind of a joke there. They really running a nice little scam there. What do you mean? Up. It's not as spectacular as you'd like to believe it is? Uh, I didn't really think it was, personally. I mean, I've never been up there, so... I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. It's been my experience in life that waterfalls are something that women like to look at, and I couldn't... So your wife liked the waterfall? Um, yeah, I mean, women like to go look at waterfalls for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't, yeah, I mean... Yeah, yes, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yes, Alan. Um, did, uh, Josh, did you guys take the boat trip where you get real close to the falls and you get soaking wet? I did that. Oh, the maiden uh, mist was up there. Really, you did that? Why, why did that you do that? Uh... Because I'd never been close to a waterfall, and I wasn't going to get on the lake and. Go isn't over. isn't the boat called something something mist or something? Gator the mist. Yeah, we did that as a kid, Alex. Me and my mother went to that. What you go there. get drowned in the water too? Uh, we as kids, we went up there. My father wanted to go to Canada, so I was like, "Let's go, Leo." So we went, and it was um, I liked the Canada, but at the time, Josh, I don't know. if We went a long time ago. I don't know how it is now, but I was asking my brother this, Alex. When we went into Canada at that time. Mm -hmm. They didn't, you didn't need a passport. They just checked your car. Now you need a passport to do, get to Canada. Do you need a passport now to get into Canada? Really? I think so. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. We, we didn't go to the Canadian side. We just looked from the American side. But I remember uh, telling them to get... You need a passport to, to sure. cross into Canada by vehicle, yeah. Now, do they do Canadians have to show passports to come into the United States too? Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It used to be reciprocal that you didn't, and then they changed all that. What well, uh, terrorism? Yeah. A couple yeah. Of years ago. Is it because of the, is it because of the terrorism, Charlie? Probably post 9/11. Yeah, that's when they started doing it. Yeah. Wow. Post 9/11. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. you could still do it with just a driver's license up until like three or four years ago, but then that. That changed. It gave like a long warning time for when it would expire, and it just maybe about two or three years ago. Now you definitely have to have. Well, oh, I went to Canada without a passport with Abby Hoffman when he was on the oh, really? run, when he was on the run from the law, <laughs> and I went up to visit him up there, and uh, he uh, he took me. He had a boat, and he took me, and he took my wife, and he took his uh, lady <laughs> friend at the time, Johanna, and uh, we got in the boat. 
and uh, he takes me up the river a little bit. Uh, we're in, in the St. Lawrence uh, Seaway. St. Lawrence, right? Right, and then he goes into this little area and he says, see, this side over here is, is uh, the United States and that area over there is Canada. Yeah. He said, that's my plan of escape. <laughs> yeah. so and then, then what he did is he took us up a little bit through the river or whatever, and we actually went up to Canada. It's and we got off on the Cana Can Canadian side and kind of sat on the shore and, and stuff like that. So I've actually been to Canada not only without a passport, but with a guy who was on the run from the law. So, you know, it was really exciting. Yeah, that would be exciting to meet him, yeah. yeah. I, I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't recommend anyone to go to Niagara Falls personally, but it, I mean, we went. I, I wouldn't recommend anybody hanging out with a guy who's running from the law, but, you yeah, know. I, I, <laughs> I, no. really, Harboring a fugitive. Really funny, really <laughs> funny. We got up there and uh, we found the house. And we found Abby, and as soon as we found it, Abby said to me, Alex, come on, let's go. And he got in the boat. And we went out into the middle of the, of the St. Lawrence Seaway. And wow. he said, to, he shouted at the top of his lungs. He stood up and shouted out at the top of his lungs, I'm Abby Hoffman. And he, he says, about once a week I have to do that to keep myself sane. <laughs> you know, because he was using a fake name and everything else, you know, and um, he'd been successfully doing it for so long. He he was in part of a group that was out to save the St. Lawrence Seaway because there was like winter navigation that was taking place that was pushing the ice up onto the shores and ruining the wildlife. Mm -hmm. And he fought that as Barry Freed. That was that his was funny name. Right and uh, the uh, senator at the time, uh, what was his name now? Oh, uh, 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 and the governor, uh, the lieutenant governor of the state of New York, came up to have meetings with him that's because he was the expert on this whole thing and they were trying to help him with this. Mary Ann Krupsack was the lieutenant governor at the time and I met up with her. We went to a meeting where she was shaking hands with Abby and you know she didn't know who he was. She knew who he was, that's amazing. And the senator from New York at that time was who very was famous. I'm trying to remember his name Let's now. See. What you my about? mind's you know, going bad uh, in my later years here. But <laughs> one day they finally told him, you know that guy you were, had a picture standing next to shaking hands with him was Abby Hoffman. And he says, I'll be damned. <laughs> that was his whole, you know. But he lived quite a life on the lam. And I learned a lot of lessons about how to do it, you know. And um, so anyway, that was, that was my time up in the, up in, up in the, the, place, the place where, uh, uh, where was that, uh, that uh, mayonnaise? That, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, oh, what do you call it? Salad dressing. Thousand Island salad dressing oh, Island, came yeah. from there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that happened because Astor, who had a boat up there, had all his friends up there one day, and they were going to have dinner. And all of a sudden, the guy who was the chef had run out of salad dressing. He had forgotten to order salad dressing. So he came up with the idea: if I take some mayonnaise and mix it with ketchup, I do that sometimes myself with yeah, the well that, burger sauce, and then yeah. add, add some pickle relish. Oh, I don't need a pickle. I do that with my tuna. And they loved it, and they <laughs> said, it's good. Oh, yeah, they said, this is wonderful. What is it? And he says, I call it Thousand Island Dressing. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, that, I didn't realize that's what it was. I mixed it myself sometimes when I don't want to buy it and store the mayonnaise yeah, and well, the ketchup. That's how you get <laughs> Thousand Island Dressing. Yeah. 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 If you could, I'd use it on my burgers. Terrific. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Hello, Phil. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, all right. Uh, but, uh, now got, he can defend himself. Well, I got some pain, arm pain, so I was laying down with an ice and, and hot. Are you sure it well, isn't a heart attack? You sure it isn't a heart attack? Oh, no, no. I fell uh, last week or about two oh. weeks ago. Really? And I fell on my shoulder. Oh, okay. How are your penis, how are your penis shots going? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, a little minor morning wood, but 
nothing, <laughs> you know, nothing to write home about. Basically, it's your penis saying "ouch." <laughs> yeah, really. You know how you close. <laughs> In case people haven't haven't I can't, I don't know I can't what we're to. talking about, Phil is going through something to help uh, him get to mescent. Oh, that's a nice word. Mm -hmm. uh, get to mescent. Midlife crisis. Uh, by by a midlife crisis. He's way past midlife. Uh, 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 to to uh, help him get. Uh, what I guess to mescent? Yeah, to get him to be too mescent. Well. Be you a man know, again. <laughs> Look at there's, um, you know, the instead of the girly boy there. like he is, yeah. Well, the things that happen down there are kind of a precursor to other problems like heart attack, stroke, uh, because they're it's the first area where uh, you have restricted blood flow. And uh, well, if you want to get an erect, if, if, if you want to, if that's you want to, kind of stroke. If you want to get an erection again, here's my suggestion. Yeah. Go to a country where they have hanging as the death penalty and then kill somebody. And supposedly, just as you drop and uh, it, it chokes works. you, you get wood. What was that? Carradine? Uh, he hung him. I met him at a comic show. That guy was crazy, Alex. There's a jailbird. Obviously. They found him in a closet in like Singapore or someplace like yeah. that. So it's called auto erotic uh, yes. asphyxiation. Yeah. Oh, asphyxiation. How come I know about that? Try that tonight. But anyway, no, but, but supposedly, guys, when they got hung, uh, they, they, they got wood. You know, and they ejaculate uh, anyway, the, know or some, well, it's something like that. And I guess you know, the, you'd say to yourself that last moment before you completely go of, off to La La Land. Oh, yeah. finally, you did something. <laughs> you know. Can I say something? Yes. I don't tell us I, about I, I, your. I don't. don't but whatever, you, whatever you do, don't tell us about your erections. Okay, we don't. No, want to do like, there's nothing to write home about. But Alex, listen to this. I told Phil. I can say this on the end, Alex. This is. Don't tell him about your penis problems. But Phil, you know what you could say? What I find amazing, Alex. He deadlifted 240 pounds, but he can't get a hard on. <laughs> Come on. But Phil, be proud of yourself. Come on. Shoot. Boy, that's a new. That's a new number. He told me 320. So it was 345 and uh, you tell Alex how much you did 320 I, that that isn't even your leg <laughs> you you deadlift keep 320 your, every day keep your microphone a little bit away from you Phil uh, yeah right. that better? <laughs> yeah that's much better all right like yeah. I'm shouting I was getting ahead last here. time you told me to turn it up maybe it's you could mute yourself Phil Alan mm -hmm. yeah so last night we were talking about shootings and gun control on the show Mm -hmm. And I said that I believe that civilians in the United States should not have access to AR-15 type weapons. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Phil Meyer calls me today after he's listened to the show. I'm glad he's here to defend himself and says, that's not the, the weapon of choice in mass murders. Handguns are. And I said, "Now nah, that's just not true. That's not true. And he said, you got to get your facts right. So here he is. Well, let me get my AR and I'll and I'll show you. <laughs> well, the fact of the matter is that, uh, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the uh, your governor yeah. um, out there in California um, is, uh, sent, I read something today, he is asking people to help him uh, try and put through a 28th Amendment. And the 28th Amendment will put into law uh, not the banning of guns, but making it rather more difficult for people to lay their hands on them. And uh, he asked if we could send some money, you know, to help do this. So I sent 50 bucks. So That was good. Hmm. It'll never pass. Next as time, long as send he... it to Trump. Well, no. <laughs> the fact of the matter is that, uh, you know, if, 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 you know, if they raise enough money, they could pass something like that. And I'll tell you why. Who gets anything passed in this country? People with money, okay? You pay, you know, a lot of those uh, good Republican senators and congressmen aren't so honest that if you give them some money and grease their palms, they won't vote for something, you know? So I, I see money as perhaps the best way in which to accomplish this. I, I'm actually surprised that Phil isn't saying that uh that ARs are, are, like he told me, that ARs are not the weapon of choice in mass murder in this country. They're not. 
Where did you find? So where'd you, you, where'd you hear that, Phil? Uh, it's, uh, it's the is it the CDC? Uh, I, I read it. Uh, where I'm, I was also reading about suicides, uh, that sixty percent of gun deaths are suicides. I, I imagine that makes sense. Okay, you yeah. know. Sure, but that's not that that that's not mass murder. And and, and Alan is just chicken to really say how he feels. You know? I did say how I felt last night, and you had a problem with it. So there we go. Well, the number that's one, right. the number one gun used in mass shootings is not guns, a, a, a pistol. It's it's AR it's AR fifteens. It's assault weapons. Well, uh, uh, mass shootings are. Well, they seem to make up a great deal of the deaths now. Do you know that in what state did I read? This year, so far, they've had 180 deaths as a result of mass shootings. Now, where are these happening? They're Here happening we go in Chicago, again, the they're happening in Baltimore, that, they're that, happening in all of these... Thanks for bringing this up, uh, Alan. I really appreciate it. These are the it. states that are the most draconian when it comes to gun laws. By the way, you didn't send Tony any coffee, did you? No. Uh, oh, okay. no. He bought I his, got, he I got bought his own coffee. Hmm? He bought no, it. I got to get coffee. a cup. Man, let me get my coffee. I got yeah, Maxwell. Go ahead, Tony. Oh, go ahead. We need I'm you. I'm going to watch TV later. Maxwell in. House? Somebody yeah. mute him. Good to the last drop. Next, <laughs> next, he'll be drinking U Ban. Wait a minute. I think. I, CBS News. AR 15s are the weapon of choice for mass shooters. Maybe their choice, but they're not. I, you know, there, that's the one that's used the most. That's the one that's used the most in mass shootings, Phil. Well, most of the mass shootings. That's what I did. Are uh, are street shootings? You know, uh, you Phil, said Phil, Phil, was, Phil, Phil, Phil. Hold on hold a it, second. We, we, we talked about we talked about we talked about mass shootings, where anywhere from like three to ten people get killed at a time, two or more. But uh, let let me let me say this. You, I you feel so much better. Night. It's two or more. No, you said last night hmm. that uh, you were upset over the gathering that was dispersed in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know that that was ripe for a mass shooting, uh, and the police did you a favor, and did that neighborhood a favor, and did the people a favor by dispersing them. And the reason being is that look at what happened in many, many other cities. Uh, on the fourth. Do you know we've had twenty five percent less murders in in New York City this year? Yeah, everybody moved to Florida. He always ends with a joke. Well, Not it's a good true. one. Though. It's true. They're moving out of California. They're moving out of New York. Hmm? Uh, because the gun Alex had a problem. problem. I think Alex had a problem aside on the way they dispersed them. Well, how do you how do you disperse a big crowd like that? Those are the tactics. I don't know. It was that big a crowd? I didn't see that big a crowd down there. I just saw more cops than I saw a crowd. Well, you know, I wasn't. Uh, I just felt. I just felt that they were they were bothered by the fact that it was uh, uh, that it was, uh, it was Harlem. <laughs> you know? well, I'm sure they. I'm sure there were so. some. I, I'm sure there were some mass groups downtown. Uh, and I don't think they shut them down. Oh, yeah, you know. Well, so uh, there was um, th there was a, a, a number of uh, shootings uh, that took place. Uh, I can't remember the cities because I wasn't thinking about, you know, talking about mm -hmm. it. Uh, but uh, on the 4th, uh, there were several uh, parties that got broken up by mass shootings. The matter of fact, there's one where they just found another body. Can you I don't know can you hold on a up. second? Hold on a second. I have somebody here whose name I don't know. So what I want to do is put my camera on, and then admit them and see what we get here. Uh, his name is Nicholas Barrow. Uh, hello, <laughs> Nicholas. Are you there, Nicholas? Or am I going to wind up seeing... The camera's uh, not on. Oh, oh, we're, we're seeing you, that's all. Nicholas Barrow doesn't have anything. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, I Nicholas. Can. Yeah, are, hello. Are, are you there? Can you show us your face? Yeah, yeah. Turn on, your, show you. turn, turn on your camera. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, 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 no. There, there, go. Go. there we go. There we go. Thank you. I told you. Hey, Nicholas, I'm going to report you, and you're not going to be able to use Zoom ever again. Okay? <laughs> there we go. 
Uh, yeah, you want to watch that for a while, guys? Yeah, so that's the same website you always go to, Cocky Boys. <laughs> yeah, right. Copyright uh, infringement. Okay, and I'm going to report. And it's a good thing okay, uh, uh, Brian's daughter wasn't done. there. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let me. Let me I gotta this. tell you, Alex, that guy's Fine. voice sounds a, a lot like several of the other guys, and I bet it's all the same guy. It probably really? is. It sounded. He said, "I was going to say, wait a minute," and I, before you said, you said, "Got me at your show." You said, "Can you show us your face?" Well, listen, I want to thank him, by the way, because it's the first time we've ever gotten straight porn. No, that wasn't straight. That straight? No, that wasn't straight. Oh, that, that oh. Wasn't straight. oh, was that a guy and another guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, that was a, that's what I said. Damn. Why is it always gay? Why, you, why is it always gay? Well, here comes Jack Bishop. Let's see here. Oh, no. Let's see what he does. The Zoom bomber, really too. Jack. Let's see if this is actually <laughs> Jack Bishop. You didn't know it wasn't Alan is the Zoom bomber. Let me see here. I just, uh, well, I, I oh, here, here we go. I, yeah, Jack Bishop, is this Jack? Okay, yes, it is. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jack. Hi, Jack. <laughs> Hi, Jack. Hi, Jack. Is it really Jack? <laughs> it really is Jack. <laughs> Jack came to talk about something. Jack, did you have something you wanted to talk about? Well, I thought I'd just check and see what you guys were talking about before <laughs> I do the <laughs> <answer. Porn. laughs> Yeah. Well, Phil yeah. Phil started doing his whole gun thing again. Oh no, I got I got egged on by Alan the liberal. He's a liberal now, you said? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, um, you know, I mean, all I'm saying is is that the gun of choice for mass shootings is the AR-15. Okay. Yeah. In this country. In this country. In the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. I now, mean, what are you going to take a real it's, cop it's, for a choice or a rental cop? Where does the right to bear arms? begin and end. I mean, do I have the right to own a nuclear device? Yes. I don't want to, I want to see the movie, but I don't want to own it. <laughs> yeah. you know, if you're, you know, if you're a terrorist, I mean, you, you shouldn't deprive them of the device of choice. The device of choice would be a nuclear device. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now he's pro-choice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you look the at thing the... is, if I'm anti-drug, so if you'd stop giving these people drugs, maybe they'd stop shooting people. Well, 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 wait a minute. The argument that proves what you just said is fallacy is prohibition. You take the profit That's out of drug dealing. Wait a minute. I'm not through. You take the profit out of drug dealing and you get and you get Holland. Uh, I don't think they have such a great uh, a great thing. I, what do they have and what is wrong? They with got them? a bunch of useless people on drugs. Are, minute, what in Holland? In Holland. Holland and oh, oh, in Holland. Wait a minute, Holland. Yeah. What? What, what good is a person? I don't think. I, I, number one, I don't think I've heard anything negative about Holland in years. Nope. And secondly, I don't think I've heard anything about Holland. And okay. it was so, the market with tulips. <laughs> well, there was a tulip thing. Years per ago. capita, there are far fewer drug addicts in, in Holland than there are here. How about Switzerland, uh, where you got uh, uh, as much gun ownership per capita as here, but mm -hmm. they don't have all the mass shootings. Why? Why do? Why, why do they don't have the Second Amendment? Why? Do, why do you think they have guns, Phil? So the, uh, they have a militia. Yes, but we don't. We should. And well, we, we do. but we don't, and because we don't, in order to maintain a well-ordered militia. I'm part of a well-ordered militia. What militia? Our <laughs> sheriff's posse. Well, your sheriff's posse. Okay. Yeah. So you and you have a gun, right? Except for they don't do anything. But, uh, do you know oh, they don't do anything. Okay. They well, get together and have play. dinner and drink and you know they're a bunch well, of. Oh, hey, we're ready. Up. You know, we're ready just in case you guys, you know, try to take our guns. I guess. Hey, Phil, do you know the history of the concept of a real ordered militia in the United States? Yeah, uh, we had the English that were tyrannical. No, that wasn't it. Uh, we were able to stand up to them. That was not it. All right. Well, the you real, me, uh, Dr. Irv. The real history was the slave patrols. Right. And yeah. that well-ordered militia was out there 
to keep people like me and Charlie Wallace from from escaping from the plantation. Well, and, it, and, no, that's we why they German and, 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 well, and that was wrong. Why? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, You're if not. you look at it, well, if you look at it this way. Yeah. Let me let me let me let me it, it bring somebody into this who probably is better at this subject than either of you, and that would be Josh. Now, Josh, have you heard that about uh, the well-ordered militia being created for that reason? Um, I think that militias were kept in the 18th century for all kinds of reasons. Uh, originally, you know, the well, big Indian attacks. Um, Indian you know, attacks, okay. Um, you know, because, I mean most of the settlements in the beginning were pretty hostile and then ever since americans settled here you know they slowly but surely moved west and each time they did they would uh you know encro encroach upon land that was already owned by indians you know even though they didn't really see it that way so those things were not always friendly um mm -hmm. so it was originally for that um you know, I think in the very, very beginning was to, to be able to repel Indian attacks and send out parties to uh, take retribution for attacks or, or killings that happened, you know, small scale stuff, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty common, those kinds of things. I mean, somebody would get snatched up and murdered or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they would go out looking for their, for their pound of flesh and usually would get it. Um, I mean, I certainly think it was expanded to 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 slavery issues uh, later on. You know, as all that developed, I mean, it was a it was a pretty heavily armed country. You know, during the period, much the same as it is now. Mm -hmm. um, but the difference was, I think, you know, the, uh, the mindset was different and the purpose was different. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think people owned weapons then just for fun or. Or you know, which maybe there's anything wrong with, or or just for, you know, just just because you know they felt like they should, or so they could stick it to the man, or whatever. You know, I mean, they had some purpose behind it. Do, do we have militias today? I wouldn't say that we do. No, I mean, we we have a we have a regulated system of defense. You know, well, our, aren't, aren't the state army and and now what we would all probably consider, you know, our state national guards. Mm -hmm. You but know, I a, mean, I think yeah. that's really what what it was. I mean, the true reason for the real debate there was because, you know, our our framers, uh, in all honesty, did not really approve of and in fact kind of feared standing armies. <laughs> they, yeah, we didn't have a standing army. Right. When the standing you know, they, you know, when the revolution was over, you know, the army basically was meant to be disbanded, and in most cases was. It was kept very, very small. I mean, they didn't really believe in the the large scale standing army uh, concept. Um, of course, in the world that we live in now, that wouldn't work, right? So we have we have. Uh, evolved from that um within the limits of our constitution and, and we 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 passed some federal laws in that time to allow our standing army and who commands it and the funding of it and all that mm -hmm. but that was i think it would have probably really i would say started out as indian uh defense or issues it sort of evolved into everything else from there homeowners uh homestead homesteaders you know needed protection mm -hmm. um you know weapons were certainly present on plantations as uh, a means of enforcement and you know mm -hmm. a deterrence to escape and it was always there and meant to you know no one basically forgot that we could have success if we could quickly gather everyone together and those people could already come armed. You know, they could show up 
mm -hmm. with their arms. I mean, you know, they they learned that lesson quickly at, at Boston, for example. But now we have now we have police, we have state troopers, sure. uh, we have uh, armies, uh, which you said they didn't want to have, particularly no, after after the civil after the Revolutionary right. War, and we do have all those things. So we have no need for the the common person in this country to have a gun. For the most part, I would say that's probably correct, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we evolved greatly, but we did not evolve the situation or the language that allows that to exist. Mm -hmm. um, we have the opportunity to, we have the... Would you describe... Would you just to, but we yeah. have not... We have not taken advantage of it. Or Would you describe it. that amendment as being a little ambiguous by today's standards? Oh, it's it's definitely ambiguous and it's definitely outdated. I mean, you know. Um, so basically, it needs, it, 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 if they want it, if they want it, it needs a rewrite, doesn't it? Well, it, it, I mean, it 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 like anything else could use a once over or a review to reflect what modern society thinks that it should reflect. Um, I don't think it reflects what society now requires or mm -hmm. probably desires, but we haven't taken the steps to to do it. So therefore, it is what it is until we change it. And so there, you know? there we have our knowledgeable uh, scholar uh, who's very good at this. So um, how does, how do, uh, do, do you disagree with that, Jack? I disagree. I do. Do you do? Charlie yes. disagrees. Yeah, why? Because I Googled, was the Second Amendment a compromise with Southern states to ensure that they could quickly put down slave rebellions? And it says yes. Google it yourself. Um, it's on Google. It must be true. I'm d well, the historian Carol Anderson. Well, no, Google Google doesn't make it true because Google takes you to any number of sources. Right, it, it, t it takes you to the people that say that, and then one of the people is a historian named Carol Anderson. Well, I think we ha I think we have to look at her opinion. I think we have okay. to look at what actually happened. Forget about what the framers wrote. You know something? Because. Something. It doesn't really matter what actually happened at this point. What matters no. now is what we do about the fact that, like on July Fourth of this year, there were five mass shootings yep. in this country. All the guns for you. But what didn't get reported was that New York City murder rate in New York City is down twenty five. I just said that. I just said. Yeah, Alex that. just said that a few minutes ago, Jack. Well, I wasn't here, but yeah. uh, you know, we got two guys that served as law enforcement officers, and they know that most cities report annually their crime statistics. And one of the more interesting things, and I used to have to look at this years ago, was uh, when they start talking about murder. It's not stranger killing another stranger. It's usually two old boys that went to the bar with their girlfriends, and one guy danced too often with his buddy's girlfriend, and they decided yeah. to shoot it out. Well, I think the ones we are most worried about at this point are the mass shootings. I mean, yes, that, that, is, that makes up for a certain amount of shootings in this country. But the mass shootings are the ones that have grave consequences because well, somebody yes, goes into they, a, somebody goes into a crowd, pulls out an AR-15, and starts blasting away. Uh, you know, well, Alex, it, Texas had the first mass shooting in the country. Was that as Whitman? We think of it today. That was Whitman. That was Whitman. I think it was 1966. Yeah, I was there. August I was the in. First, I was 1966. in. I was in New York in in, in uh, Houston in when that Austin, happened. Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. We went up to the tower in the university tower mm -hmm. and with a yep. with a rifle and started shooting people like crazy. And and, and, and I'm not um, you know, I guess for the record, I'm not disagreeing with the the answer that, that they have there from Carol Anderson, who's a very good scholar. I, I was not really addressing that. I was asked what the 
origin of the militia system was. So that I think that's a different question than the origin or the thinking behind the Second Amendment. Um, was it a compromise with Southern states? I, I, I would not disagree with that, but also I think, you know, we touched on this last week. Remember, sometimes, you know, two things or more can be true at the same time. Yeah, I'm not saying that's because the it was reason, a compromise with Southern states. Reason. It's not mean it was exclusive to that in purpose, you know. All ten amendments were a compromise in a way with, you know, I mean, uh, the Bill of Rights was a compromise to ratify the Constitution. So, I mean, um, so I, I'm not disagreeing with that. I guess I was more addressing the the origins of the militia system mm -hmm. itself, which I think is separate. Well, it's not separate, which I think is, is just different than... Well, the, the, only, the only thing that I'm arguing here is, is that when they say in order to maintain a well-ordered militia, which is the way it begins, okay, that is a prerequisite for all the other things you're saying after that. Would I be right or wrong about that? Yeah, I mean, that's probably right. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, there's, that's been scrutinized, you know, quite a lot. I mean, I'm I not mean, going to ask this Supreme Court whether it's right or wrong, because obviously this Supreme Court is out of its fucking mind you know yeah i mean they're they're and this one really hasn't taken up a gun case not so yet yet but some of the previous ones you know i will say have been a bit hypocritical a little bit well i believe i believe and correct me if i'm wrong but in something like 1935 the supreme court dictated because it did come up before the supreme court that that was a a um, a a what a a group right rather than an individual right because it says in order to maintain a well-ordered militia yeah so that it's a group right not a singular right and so the average person does not have the right to bear arms yeah yeah and I, and I then mean, I think, yeah and I don't remember if that's the exact date but and I think the language also might I, be am I right there was a Supreme Court ruling to that effect. Yeah, and, and and I think the language may also be a, a well-regulated, you know, militia. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, there is some room there, but I think some of the previous courts were a little bit hypocritical in that, well, if this one, I should say, were to do something like that, and that they, mm -hmm. I don't think that it's obviously very clear, okay? 1980. Uh, like, uh, like openly explicit about your rights. Right. So then your rights in that realm, guns, have mm -hmm. a little bit of evolved over the years, okay? Through mm -hmm. previous court cases and, you know, their starry decisis and all that. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little hypocritical yeah. that it's like, well, none of that matters when it came to other issues, but when it came to when it would come to this one, they would probably use that as an excuse to say, mm -hmm. Well, we can't change, you know. 100 years of law we can't throw that out the window i mean i i think that they would they would look at it differently than they did some of the other things i think but i wasn't wrong exactly that that you didn't that wasn't said back then um anybody have a comment here i noticed that uh brian hasn't really said anything tonight bill's on huh hey. bill's on <laughs> hey uh I got, uh, I'm a card carrying posse member. Card carrying. You know, there it is. Ooh. Let's see close up. It says Sheriff's Pussy on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I'm a Zoom bomber? <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. But also, yeah. but Phil, let's, let's make it clear though. At one time, you were uh, a licensed police officer. No. Yeah, I got that no, one. No, too. I mean, uh, 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 according to uh, to uh, Alan. Alan, that isn't exactly true. What is the truth, Alan? You sworn. He was, he, he was a, a sworn reserve officer. Ooh. Somebody on the show called him a rent a cop. Oh, I called him a hobby cop. No, somebody <laughs> called him a rent a cop, and the rent a cop is not the. As a matter of fact, he didn't even get paid. Yeah. So, as a reserve reserve officers don't get paid. 
And so he was a reserve officer for 21 years for mm-hmm. the city of Richmond. And, and yeah. what, how long how long were you an officer of the law? Last time than that. Oh my God. I, I got injured on the job, but I wasn't a reserve. I was a paid officer. You paid mm-hmm. officer. Yeah, when you got injured. Well, how'd you, get in, how'd you get injured again? I forget now. I was selling drugs to somebody as a, as a narcotics officer. And the guy said, you shorted me last time and spit on me. And so we went chasing them over some backyard fences. In those days, I could go over a fence um, without running over the fence. But in any case, I could jump over the fence. And he, he, we went over about four fences in the fourth yard. He cleared a pile of pallets in the backyard that they had wood pallets. I did not and blew out my knee. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I thought so, you got uh, hurt. I thought you got hurt from carrying Phil on your back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind of drugs was it? We were we were zoom bombing when when that when that happened. So no, but but yeah, and then the guy was laughing. I had a gun pointed at him, I identified myself as a police officer. The guy was laughing, knowing you're not gonna shoot me. But but somebody another agency nearby was working the the, the, the this thing with us, whatever, had a canine and the canine came in the backyard and grabbed this guy by his testicles. He really? wasn't listen, laughing. He wasn't listen, laughing anymore. But you guys ran past the most important question that was asked since I've been here, and that was Tony. What kind of drugs were you selling? Oh, um, God, I don't know. Uh, whatever was popular, probably heroin. At you that didn't time. lose any of it at the at the. Um, uh, like United, Sir, Avenue. It was bunk. He was <laughs> selling bunk. You didn't lose any of it at the White House, did you? I can't believe <laughs> him. him and Hunter were imbibing. <laughs> I, I that that amazes me. By the way, that story that story is just the silliest story. Somebody planted that. I think uh, I, it's probably Trump a, did it. Probably a Republican who wanted to. Trump did Trump that. At least there from the last at least he admitted Trump did it. There you go. Well, yeah. the great Willie Nelson once admitted that he smoked some dope on the roof of the White House, and I say, way to go, Willie. Yeah. I got to get ready to do a show. Yeah. I'll catch you guys on the okay. flip. Okay, bye. Oh, we'll be here. We don't need to come over there anymore, right? <laughs> yeah, just stay here. <laughs> yeah, we'll just stay here. <laughs> Connection's good. Yeah. Wait a minute, he's frozen. That means he's gone. He's gone. Yeah, he's gone. yeah let me just Allen, did anybody find Mike Allen yet? I think he's dead. I messaged him. He never well, got back. Yeah, so real quickly, you know, I've tried a couple calls up there, and I had his cell phone, his home phone. His cell phone's been cut off. Home phone's been changed with no mm-hmm. new number. I was in Sacramento for a day visiting a friend, so I had his address. I, I drove by there and knocked on the door. I asked the neighbors. Uh, you know, no, nobody, everybody hadn't seen him in a while. So Did a welfare check, huh? Kind of. Yeah. I didn't go in the backyard or anything. But, wow, well, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of... Mailbox. Check his mailbox. Yeah. God, I would have never thought about that, Brian. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Did you check his mailbox, by the way? No, but he had an ashtray in the front sitting on a little wooden table oh, with, about oh seven, with about 700 uh, snuffed out c- cigarettes. So, no, that, that's I what, had the right one? house. That's, that's probably course. what got him. It's like yeah. a, a Peter Sellers movie. He wasn't, he wasn't looking good. Uh, when he was on Jack's show, he he was looking very peaked. You should have seen him a year before. He didn't look good then either. You know, that sounded terrible. Yeah, that was the picture of Phil. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Perfect ad for not smoking. Anyway, mm-hmm. hey, listen, I'm playing the uh, theme. You can't hear it, so I have to always tell you I'm playing it. If you had uh, mix minus, we could hear it. No. No, because <laughs> believe it or not, it's these particular files that don't yeah. play. If I play, well, here, wait a minute, hold on a second, just quickly. Can you people hear this? Now in its ninth year, yeah. Yeah. this yeah. is Gabnet. That's me. The Great American yeah. Broadcast Network. Yeah. Talk like you've never heard it before. See? So you suck would, like you never heard it before? And now <laughs> the theme is playing and you can't hear it, right? No. Oh. I can't figure out what it has to do with the files. But anyway, that's it. Hey. Thank you all. Thanks to Josh. I appreciate it. Charlie Wallace, Jeff Stein, Steve. Always wonderful to have you here when I, we can get you. Uh, Alan, you. great to have you here. Tony, wonderful. Brian, wonderful. Phil, terrific. Who else was here? Uh, uh, Kevin, Jack Kevin Bishop. Uh, who else? Kevin. 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 Yeah, and yeah. Kevin. Okay. Uh, anyway, 
all of you. Uh, thank you. And we'll uh, we'll see you again, uh, hopefully, tomorrow night. Bye-bye, Bye. everybody. Give a big wave. Goodbye. And I'll give a big Ready wave. Goodbye back. Tony. There they go, oh. folks. That's our citizen panel. And there'll be a new one forming right here on the uh, Jack Bishop program, The Intersection. He'll be doing it on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.